In this video, we are going to see a new characteristic of Blazor for Spironet Core 6, and that is error boundaries. With error boundaries, we will be able to catch an error in our Blazor components and display a custom UI instead of just having the application blow up. Let's see an example of that. Here we have our first example in which we have this input type number, which we have binded to a number variable that we have here and here we have this display number component which as its name implies will display the number but in display number we have a validation on the on parameter set lifecycle method of the component in which we are saying that the number must be positive so if it is less than one we will throw an exception and here we have that we are displaying the number let's see what is the current behavior of blazor in this scenario, I will press Ctrl F5 to run my application and I will go to example 1 and in here you can see that we have our input type number here and below it we are displaying the number. Really simple, right? But what if we go below 1? Well, in that case we get an exception here, which doesn't look nice. Now our application, although it still works, it has this UI here, which just doesn't look good. So what we're going to do is that we're going to use our error boundary component so that when we come here, instead of just displaying one, we're going to display custom UI that will indicate the user that an error has occurred. So let's go back to Visual Studio and let's do that. In order to use the error boundary component, we have to say here error boundary and we have to enclose whatever that we want to say that if an error occurs, then we want to display a custom UI. For now, we're just going to leave it like this and we're going to save and we're going to go back here and I will refresh this page. And as you can see, everything looks normal. But now if I go below one, then I get this an error has occurred. But at least I didn't get the yellow banner here below that says that an unhandled exception has occurred. Now you may be wondering how can we customize this error that we have here, this UI that we have here. We can do that by using projection. First, we need to say here child content, which is the default UI that is going to be displayed when there is not any errors. Now, in order to say what should appear in the case of an error, we have to say here error content. And here I can put whatever I want. For example, I can say div an error has occurred. The number must be positive. And I will press Ctrl S to save and I'll go back here. And as you can see, we are back here and now I can use my application. But if I go below one, then you can see that we have our custom error UI here. But there is one problem. If I go back to one, then it still says that an error has occurred. I would like to reset the error boundary so that we can display the normal UI. We can do that by using the recover function of error boundary. Let's go back to Visual Studio and see how to do that. For that, we need to grab a reference of this error boundary component. So I will come here and I will say error boundary, error boundary, and then I will put a reference of this component into this variable by using the ref directive and then I will say error boundary here. Now what I want to do is to run a custom method whenever I update this input type number. So first what I need to do is to change this bind to bind value and then after that I will say on input and here I will use a lambda expression so I will say here change events args e lambda expression number changed and I will pass the change events args. Now I will create this method right here private void number changed change events args e and then here I will say two things. The first one is going to be error boundary dot recover. This recover function is the one that resets the error boundary. So I will say recover. And of course, if there are no errors, then recover doesn't do anything. And besides that, I need to say number equal to int dot parse. And then I will say e dot value dot to a string. And now everything should work. 
let me save and let's go back here and you're going to see that everything still works but if i go below one then i get my custom error ui but if i go back to one then you can see that i can alternate between having an error message displayed and having a normal value displayed now this is the case for a simple use of an error boundary what if we have a list if we have a list then we can use the error boundary component in every element of the list let's see an example of that let's go to example 2 and here as you can see i have this numbers list in which i have five numbers two of them are negative therefore they will throw an error when used with the display number component here as you can see i have for each bar number in numbers and for each number i am using an error boundary and i have my child content in which i use the display number component and i have an error content in which i display my custom ui for the error now let's see how that works let's go back here and let's go to example two and as you can see we have error displaying minus one error display minus three and two four and five are just okay now this is useful when you have a list of elements that will come from a database and maybe a few of them will have an error but you don't want to just have your application blow up you want to display custom ui for those elements that have the error i have this button fix error which does the following because i can't grab a reference of each individual error boundary or at least i would have to do some trickery in order to do that i opted for the following strategy i have this loading bool variable here which is false by default which means that this is being displayed and i have this fix error button and the on click is this fix error method that i have here and what i'm doing here is that i am fixing the list by only having positive numbers in it and then i am doing loading true so that this gets wiped out i do a await as delay but in real life of course you will have a real operation like actually retrieving records from a database and then i do loading false and with this i get the following i get fixed error and everything works why do i have to do that because if i don't then nothing will happen for example let me comment this out just so that you can see what this is about let me save and let's go back here and this will update and now if i say fix error nothing really happened i mean this got changed from minus one to one but the error boundary is still in an error state that is why just updating the values is not enough you have to actually reset the error boundary but because we have a list it is really hard to get a reference of each of them one way to solve this is by using some sort of variable that is going to delete wipe out this and then rewrite everything so in this case this is why i am using this trick that i have here if this is a really expensive operation you may need to actually get a reference of each error boundary and then issue a recover function on each of those instances of the component if you like this video please make sure to subscribe to my channel and make sure to check my udemy courses they are all on discount link in the description of this video thank you